like everybody's you know, insurance is in the middle of every single one of these deals right yeah like they're fortune 500 companies for a reason right right but to some extent it, it's the right way of doing it because you're covered he's covered i'm covered yeah. you know like your interest needs to be covered some way you're listening to the azria show if you're looking for quality real estate investing information that you can trust you found it Stay tuned and join the tens of thousands of members that have already benefited from Azria, your home for education, market information, support, and networking opportunities that will advance your real estate investing career. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing today? Today is an awesome day, and today we have a very special guest, and we have Derek Karchner here with Healy Insurance. Invited him to come in today because he has some very, very important products that we want you guys to be able to have privy to. But before we do that, Derek, man, welcome to the show. I have my co-host, Mike. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great, man. Wonderful. Great, great. Okay. You guys got to give me a little bit of energy. Give me some energy. <laughs> You know how it goes with me. <laughs> right, right. So, Mike, before we get started, man, what, what all you been doing today? Trying to get through all these technical difficulties <laughs> with, the, with the show. But, no, we're here, man. Everything's it's a great day. Oh, it's sunny now, actually. Now, yeah, it was gray a little bit earlier today. So, okay. So, Derek, man, Healy Insurance, you guys been around for a while. You've been a part of Azria for a while. Give us a little bit of background about yourself and what you're doing as far as an investor and as far as insurance. Yeah, cool. So Gila Insurance, we've been around since we actually came to be through a purchase. So I've actually been coming to Azria meetings before Gila Insurance existed. I've been been coming since 2014. And, wow. uh, and, and what happened was, is the agency I was working for decided to sell and I was able to purchase a portion of it. And that, that portion was kind of what focused on investors. And that, that, that worked for me really well because I love it, right? I love investing. I've done a number of different things from bridge loans. I've never done a flip. Okay. I've got, I've done a, some lease options and some rental properties and had some that really worked out well and other ones that absolutely were a disaster. It was well, awesome. Well, you know how that happens, mm -hmm. man. You, you take the gamble, some things pan out, some things don't pan out. So that's part of investing, right? You gotta yeah. take the risk. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, as it as it stands, my lease options were were all exercised in the last year, and so you know, kind of looking at what I'm going to do now. At, at current, I've got a commercial duplex that I've got, and and that's that's my current investments. Awesome, man. Okay. And, and you know, one thing we always like to encourage is if you're going to use a service provider, it always helps if they're an investor themselves or they at least have some experience, so you know they could pass that on to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. For sure. It's good because you can come from that that same investor perspective. Yeah. You know, you go out and you try and find some insurance products and you tell people what, what you do. And they say, well, no, the house have to be tenanted. They have to be owner occupied. But you guys do products for vacant properties also, correct? Yeah, yeah, we do. So that's actually how, how it all got started is it was in 20, well, it was 2008. And we had a carrier that actually came to us and said, we got a lot of vacant homes out there. As, as everything started crashing, do you guys want to sell this? And so we kind of jumped on it and we didn't know what we were doing. And what we learned was that it was a bunch of different investors and they were just buying up flips. And then, you know, some of those turned into rental properties. And, and so over the course of those eight years, we actually learned a lot about what was going on. And, you know, coming to the Ezria meetings was awesome because it really opened my eyes as to what exactly is going on yeah. and, and what investors needed and what, you know, kind of the ebbs and flows of the market. And, and so, yeah, that was, that's kind of how okay. that kind of the background of how we got into this. So question on the, when it comes to getting a policy for a vacant, right, obviously we're known to buy properties in distress, right? So you got to start with a vacant policy. I've personally have recently, I've, I've, I've forgotten to switch the policy to mm. rental. Yeah. Right. So yeah. what, what kind of troubles can you get in or not? Why, well, if you keep a vacant policy when you have tenants in there? Yeah. So to be honest with you, you're not going to get in a ton of trouble. Okay. So occupancy matters and, and it does. And so I don't want to say that, you know, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Usually what happens though, is on a vacant property, you're actually paying more premium, mm -hmm. right? Because it's vacant and insurance companies know that they know that the likelihood of a pipe busting or, or it getting broken into or whatever is higher because it is vacant. Got it. And so when you put a tenant in there, 
the the risk decreases it changes but it decreases from a lot of what the the carriers worry about now the liability stuff can increase a little bit but so usually you're not going to get in a whole lot of trouble with that however you're overpaying got it and chances are mm-hmm. your coverage sucks got it so here's kind of the deal like and it's something that I actually wanted to talk a little bit about today because it it floors me the things that I see investors have on their policies and it really just speaks to lack of understanding of what they're buying. And, and to me, that's a, that's a crime of the insurance agent. And, and I mean, look, nobody really wants to sit there and listen to a ton about insurance. And, and I get that. <laughs> um, but there are certain things that it's like, look, on, on a vacant home, sometimes the best you're going to be able to get is what's called a, a basic policy. And that means you're covered for 10 things and 10 things only fire, lightning, hell, wind, you know, maybe vandalism. It kind of depends on the policy. And, and then a a lot of times they'll only cover it for the actual cash value, which means if it burns down, you're, you're host. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so it's specifically when it's super distressed or if you're going to be replacing the roof or, or something like that, that, that you really get into that kind of trouble where you have this, this policy that is the best you can get but it's not awesome. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not awesome because the carriers know what you're doing. They know you're going in, they know you're tearing stuff apart. You know, you're going to find the leak. They know, you know, it's going to be vacant, you know, but, and so there's, there's certain things that carriers do to kind of protect themselves. Okay. You know? So what are just, and I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, Derek, but what are some of the things that as a fix and flipper on mm-hmm. a vacant property, what kind of coverage should we have? Cause now you got me thinking about my own coverage. It's, you know, in Chicago and it's freezing, snowing and everything mm-hmm. like that. So now I'm thinking, okay, do I have the right coverage? And this same thing goes for here in Arizona when it's, you know, 120 degrees and the property is vacant, you know, if the AC go out or something like that, what kind of coverage should we yeah, so, look for? Yeah. So generally speaking, you want to look for something that's called special coverage, right? If you can get it, that's what you want, right? Okay. So there's three like hooks is how I like to describe it, right? So if you're thinking about a closet and there was three hooks, you have your basic, your broad, and your special. And basically what we do is we take your policy and we hang it on one of those hooks. And, and those hooks basically begin to tell us how the policy is going to respond. It, it covers perils. So your basic policy covers 10 things. A broad policy covers 16 things and a special covers everything unless it's excluded. And a lot of people are like, what does that, like, what does that even mean? Yeah. But, but, but it actually means a lot. And I actually have a story that I want to tell real quick sure. on my nephew, right? <laughs> so this is on a regular homeowner's policy. And, and my nephew, he's, he's about four. Mom and dad are outside in the backyard. And my sister realizes, you know, I, I haven't seen Zane for a little bit. You know, what's up? Mm-hmm. So she goes and she finds him, you know, it had been 10 minutes. But in those 10 minutes, he went and plugged up the, the tub, right? And it starts to overflow. Like he starts to, he's going to take a bath. So, you know, so he plugs it up, he starts the water and then mom calls him outside. So an hour and a half later, they come into the home and it's just flooded. Okay. So the reason I tell the story is because, you know, she calls me up and says, Hey, is this going to be covered? And so I said, well, you're on a special policy, which means it's, unless it's excluded, it's covered. And to my knowledge, there's no exclusion for four-year-old stopping up the bathtub (laughs) and turning on the water. So yeah, you're covered. Right. And, and it turned out to be like an $80,000 loss. Wow. Right. And I mean, cause they replaced the floors and cabinets and all sorts of stuff. And, and the bottom line is, is as I'm helping them move some stuff that night and, and moving furniture out, it really goes down to investors ask me all the time, well, I mean, why is special so important? Like what could happen? I mean, as long as wind and hell and fire is covered, like I'm good. Yeah. Except you don't know what's going to happen. Right. You know, you don't know what your tenant is going to do. True. Right. And so to answer your question, and that was a long way around. No, that makes good. sense. The, look, the bottom line is, is that special coverage is what you want. Now, it, we like to say, if you're going to break the shell of the house, you're probably not going to be able to get special coverage, okay. right? Now we- so, so explain the shell of the house, just yeah, for those so, who don't know. So if you're going to break the, the shell, meaning you're going to expose it to the elements, you're going to tear, tear down a wall and add on, that's breaking okay. of the shell. Mm-hmm. If you're going to tear the roof off, 
that's breaking of the shell. Okay. Uh, windows and doors, I mean, technically are breaking of the shell, but, but really we can get around that if, you know, you pull a door out and you put a door on. What right. the carriers want to know is, is it secure at night? Right. Gotcha. Yep. And, and that's kind of the deal, right? So as long as you're not going to break the shell, you should be able to get special, okay. right? Interior cosmetic, you can do all sorts of stuff and call it interior cosmetic and get special coverage. If you're going to do something else, if you're going to break that shell, then, then yeah, you're probably going to end up with a basic policy. Okay. So what's the difference from a basic to special? Because, you know, as investors, you're shopping around for quotes. It's like, give me the cheapest. You yeah. Know, yeah, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, is there a big cost difference from the basic to the special? No, not really. I mean, that's, okay. that's kind of the thing, right? Yeah. Like, so sometimes special is cheaper, which is why, like, oh, wow. now, if you're talking about a landlord policy, that's different, okay. right? Like, yeah, but a hundred bucks, so $8 a month and you're going to expose yourself to, yeah. to all sorts of craziness. Like yeah. that doesn't make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, and, and actually we at Gila, we found a solution for those that are going to break the shell that they can still have special. So that's okay. one of the things that we have is that, that we've tried to find solutions for the things that, that investors face, but we know not all investors are going to come to us. So it really just really comes down to like, well, just make sure you've got what you need. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we, we have on our website, which uh, is Gila is checklists, right? Like, Hey, if you're, if you're a, uh, a flipper, you know, what, what are your options? And we've tried to put some YouTube videos to those, mm -hmm. okay. right? Where it's like, we're explaining some of these things and we try to keep them short because, you know, I mean, yeah, insurance, I, I get it. Yeah. When I do my CE, when I got to do my continuing education, 20 hours, yeah, 20 hours of insurance. And I want to, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm done, right? Think about changing careers. Huh? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't tease us, Derek. So as a fix and flipper, let's just say I'm here. And I want to pop the top. I want to yeah. rip off the roof. I want to go from a single story to a two story, add some square footage. What kind of coverage? I'm coming to Gila to get some coverage. What could Gila provide for me personally if that's that's one of the Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you're going to have to, to, well, I mean, if you're really going to turn it into a two story, that's a little different because we probably look at a, a true builder's risk policy, okay. which you can get better if it's a true builder's risk. But, but you're going to take the roof off. You're going to add some square footage, something like that. Like what, we, what we're going to tell you is, look, we're going to get you the best coverage you can get. And when you're done with that, that portion of it, call us and change it. And revert. Right? Yep. Yeah. And, and change it to that special. Because the, more, the, like the closer you get to finishing it and the more money you have invested in this, like that's, that's when it matters. I mean, look, we talk to a lot of investors that, that don't quite understand what insurance is all about. Like all from my perspective, we want to protect you from the, from the catastrophic and what, and for an investor, what does that mean? Right? Like if I had a hundred rental properties and, and let's say, you know, I got a thousand dollars coming in and, 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 you know, maybe it's not all hundred percent cash flow and whatever, like what's catastrophic to that person with that many is significantly different than what's catastrophic to a person with one rental property. Yep. Right. And so it's, it really boils down to, as you get bigger, your risk appetite should grow a little bit, little higher deductibles. And, and yeah, you know what, if I lost $200,000, I'm not dead. It hurts, but I'm right. not dead, you know? And so that, that's kind of what we look at. So it really depends on the scope of what, what your business is. And that's what we try to understand before we even start. Yeah. Right. So. So we can just call you up or how, how do we get a hold of you or how, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you're serious in investing, then we want to take the time to kind of understand what it is that you're doing and what your business looks like. Cause not every flipper is the same, right? There's a lot of people that, no, no, I want the distressed properties because that's my biggest bang for the buck. Others, I, that's not my deal. So we, we try to sit down, yep. Phone call and, and try to just figure out, you know, how that goes. So so we're happy to schedule an appointment. We're happy to take a call on the fly, but it, you know, it just kind of really depends. We're going to try to get to know your business and make sure that we're building, you know, I view it as risk management, not just insurance, but yeah. kind of a plan for like a consultation yeah. discovery type call. Yeah. Got it. So, so to go to segue from the, any questions on the flippers, Marcus, I'm going to jump into the rentals. No, but before we jump into the rentals, let's take a brief break okay. here. Perfect. Word from my sponsors. 
We'll come right back. We'll talk about segueing into landlords and things like that. Okay. A supporter of today's Azria show is Azria Business Associate, Boomerang Capital Partners. They're coined as the best urban lender, providing financing solutions to help fund your next fix and flip project. For more information, visit boomerangcapital.com. All right, guys, we are back. We are here with Derek with uh, Healy Insurance, and we're talking about insurance today. Although we know it's not the most exciting topic, but again, we want to hedge you from loss because that's the most important thing. As investors, we want to make sure that you capitalize on all your gains and get everything that you can out of each and every asset that you have. So we want to kind of do some risk mitigation during this segment right here and talk to landlords and talk to them about some of their coverage that they need. So Mike, I know you had a great question for Derek. Kind of... Um, Ask that, and let's kind of dive into that section. Yeah, because, you know, here at Ezria, we got tons and tons of landlords, right? So a couple things we're learning and experiencing this year. One is the, I know you mentioned at the last meeting about checking your current policy due to the inflation or prices of materials going up. Can you kind of touch that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, one of the things that I find interesting, it really has more to do with, like, an attitude towards insurance. Everybody knows that, like, the name of the game is cash flow right? Like that's what yeah. we're after. And, and what's interesting to me is we run into a lot of landlords that are, are convinced that they're going to do that by saving on their insurance. <laughs> the funny thing is, is again, it goes back to, okay, well, well how much are you going to save? Like if you're going to make your millions and, and you're going to get your cash flow based on your insurance, you're probably going around, you know, about it a little yeah. bit wrong. Right. And so, you know, we find that there are two types of investors. One that kind of approaches it, hey, I bought it for a hundred thousand. I want to insure it for a hundred thousand. Trouble is, is that you know what we care about insurance is what it's going to cost to rebuild. So if yeah. the home burns to the ground, what is it going to cost? If you didn't, you know, if it costs two hundred thousand to build, you haven't insured for a hundred thousand. Well, that goes back to that. Okay, can you stand a hundred thousand dollar loss? Right. Everybody hates insurance because they never pay out like they think they should, but it's it's these sorts of errors that kind of cause that to begin with. Right. Like, well, I didn't get what I thought I should have got. Well, it's a contract. That's right. all insurance is. Like, you know exactly what they're gonna do before you have the claim. And and that's really kind of where it comes from. So to to answer your question more directly, yeah, look, everybody's probably underinsured. That's the bottom line right? Because the cost of building has gone up. So if you haven't legitimately gone in and changed your policy, then you're probably underinsured. I mean, you know, what are the inflation numbers? You know, is it, is it 5%? Is it 11%? You know, I mean, I, I've seen different things uh, specifically on the cost of building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your insurance policy will increase maybe 3%. Okay. So if you're looking at, you know, 11%, you're off 8%. Already, wow! Right now, that's you know, and that that can add up quickly, specifically if you've got some of these higher end rentals, right? right? So, so that's that's basically like the replacement cost versus cash value. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. No, so so you want to make sure that you've got sufficient at, at any time to rebuild, right? Okay. The question is that I always ask investors as we kind of dive into this: is look, if your home burned to the ground today, and I showed up with a check and I handed you that check for a hundred thousand. Are you happy or are you pissed? Right? You might be happy. Yeah. Your exit plan might be, well, now I got a lot. I'm going to sell that. I'm going to take the hundred thousand, and like I'm going to make out like a bandit. Like I'm right. good. Right? That that might be your exit plan. On the other hand, if your intention is to rebuild, you wouldn't be very happy, right? Gotcha, and yeah. and so that's kind of where it comes from. Insurance companies will penalize you for underinsuring, and, yeah. and that and that's kind of another thing, you know, like if an insurance company, if you insured it for that hundred thousand and it's worth 200,000, so you insured it for 50%, well, the insurance company is going to pay their claim at 50%. Yeah. Right. And again, that's why people hate insurance companies, but again, they tell you that up front. It's all in that, you know, fine print and stuff, but yeah, that's, that's what's there. So. So, and then that's like, if the insurance company do like an insurance audit and they see that, Hey, this property is worth $200,000, but you only got $50,000 worth of coverage on here. They will actually go back and make you pay up to that $200,000. Ask me how I know guys, <laughs> ask me how I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, cause I was, I was honestly, I was one of those, it was, it was a thinner deal. And I thought, Hey, you know what, let me kind of save a couple of bucks here and there. And then it ended up biting me in the butt. 
you know, on the back end. So, yeah. I mean, I was, that's a great story right there, you know, on the misperceptions of trying to save on your insurance. Well, I just went through that and I've, I've told Derek, we had a fire in, one of, in a sixplex in one of the units, you know, toaster fire kind of thing. And it was, it was okay. It wasn't too bad, but it, you know, but anyways, you know, we didn't one, we didn't review, our, haven't reviewed our policy. So when we got everything fixed and we got, you know, the insurance wasn't because the check was actually like 70% of what we needed or what it should have been, you know? So it was actually, we got less. Mm -hmm. And then, and so yeah, how often should we get, how often should someone review their policy? Yeah. So we recommend annually, right? Like you get your renewal and, and like, it doesn't take a whole lot, right? I mean, if you've got a bunch of rental properties, you can spend your entire life doing this, right? So, so we get it, but at least, at least once a year, just take a look at it and say, yeah, okay, cool. Am I happy with that number? Yes or no. Right. Like, okay. I mean that, yeah. that when that renewal comes in, like the carriers have the ability to change the policy. And we, the, we, as an agency try to get in front of some things that is like, yeah, this is bad for, you know, for our customers. Now, one of the things that we do in our agency is, uh, is Cindy is, is an angel of all of our customers. Right, because her and Carissa, they just sit there and they go through every renewal. And if it's increased more than 10%, they're going to try to find why. Why did it increase 10%? Right. Like, did they increase the coverage by a lot? And we're seeing that with the inflation, mm -hmm. right? Where they're increasing the values of homes and different things. Or or is it just the carrier went crazy? And if the carrier went crazy, like as a broker, we'll go try to find a different option. Right. right? Okay. You know, that's one of the things we, we, we define it as insurance day, like a good insurance day is a day that we can find better coverage at a cheaper rate for a client. So, so you made me think of something we talked about your team. <laughs> so, and you also said like, when you, you pay attention to investors, you get to see like what products you might be able to put together. So I just have a, something for you to look into. So when all our insurance bills come in, you know, you can get multiple properties, you're like looking at it and you got to pay something they never put the address on yeah. the bill. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what house is, is this? this? <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so why do they do that, man? I know it's just a lighter topic, but <laughs> I don't know, man. All right. I thought Cause it's know. not like you're looking at your policy number and like, okay, this policy number lines up with this property. It's like, how do you keep organizing <laughs> that, man? Yeah, no, I hear you. So there, there are certain things and some carriers are better than others about that. Right. Where it's like, yeah, this is, this is what it's for. And, and that's, it's a funny thing, man. Like, All right. So it's common. It's not yeah. just money. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> just believe right. me, Mike, I went through that and I wrote down one year. I don't know. I was anal about it, but I wrote down like the addresses on each one of the policies, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, one year and then like never did it ever since. <laughs> you know? So, well, I, so, so one of the things like, like as crazy as it is, yeah, throw in a Google doc. Like yeah. we have Google docs shared with a lot of our, a lot of our customers, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, yeah, here, here's a list of your addresses. And it's actually something that keeps me up at night, right? Because specifically with, with flippers, we see it more with flippers. Like they'll run into a deal, buy it that day. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, that they'll never tell us. And mm -hmm. so it's one of those things, like for certain ones that we work with them, like, Hey, you know, monthly, Hey, you have you updated right. this recently? Cause that's always the one that scares me is yeah. It burns to the ground. There's no coverage. No and it's coverage. like, yeah, well, you know, did you tell us like, yeah, good point. Like on that. So two questions on there is one here in Arizona, what I learned me, Marcus, my experiences in Chicago, my title agents always on top of like, yo, I need your policy to close Yep. in <laughs> Cleveland. They don't care. They don't ask. So I bought in properties and forgot to get the insurance policy. So for here in Arizona though, um, how fast can you turn around? So if I was going to buy a property tomorrow, how fast can you get the property quoted and, and to the title company? Depends on how much I like you. No, okay. no I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, same day, okay. right? Cool. I mean, the, the truth is it depends on how much you want to, how much you want us to dig. If I'm being honest, yeah. right? Like, because there are carriers, like if you were to call me up and, and, you know, say, Hey, I, I need a quote. Well, I, and I need it right now. Well, I'm going to go with whatever the flavor of the day is. Like if I know that, you know, nationwide's got a killer landlord product right now, well, I'm going to go and see if it fits there and, and that's mm -hmm. it. Right. So, but if, if you, as a broker, if you want, we will dig right yep. and find out, okay, cool. Like we'll go 10 carriers deep. Right. And so it's one of those things that it, it, it kind of depends on how well do you want me to do my job? If you give me time. Like we will find the best rate 
at, at this coverage level. Right. And if you don't, then I'm just going to roll with whatever's off the top of my head and be like, yeah, man, this is the best I got. So it really, it really kind of depends. Got it. Got it. Is, is there any, um, benefits, you know, when you pay yearly versus monthly, is it just price benefits or is there anything else around that? Yeah. So total that one, that one too, depends on the carrier. So okay. some carriers will give like a 10% discount for paying full. Okay. In all cases though, you're going to pay, you know, the transaction fees, mm-hmm. you know, so two to four bucks, you know, okay. depending on how you set it up. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, gotcha. I want to jump into short-term rentals. Go ahead. Deal with Go that. Ahead. Yeah. Good. You know, hot topic very, very popular here in Arizona. You know, a few years ago when I jumped into the whole Airbnb thing, there's only like one provider out there, you know? Yeah. So, so it's more common now there's property managers, there's more insurance companies. So can you just talk about short-term rentals and what you're experiencing and what kind of products you have? Yeah. So originally there was a lot of carriers that didn't want to touch it because everybody's afraid of getting what's called adverse selection, right? You throw a product out there and it turns out that it's the worst risk ever right? Mm-hmm. That there's just tons and tons of claims. So as time's gone on and they've realized actually most people, you know, they, they understand I'm not going to come in trash. I'm not going to come in and steal everything. I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. so as that's gone on, we're seeing more and more carriers embrace and come up with, usually it's an endorsement, which is an endorsement is an insurance word for a change to the policy where they'll basically say, yeah, okay, this is our regular landlord, but we're going to add something that allows you to do it from a, from a short-term perspective. Okay. And, and with that, the, the carriers are very different in how they do that. Some carriers are really good about, Hey, we'll cover theft. Some carriers aren't going to do that at all. And, and that is oftentimes a lot of, you know, as we talk to investors, this is, I'm concerned that they're going to steal the, this or the, that yeah. or the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Overpipes. if you're concerned about it, like you need to mitigate that risk in some other way, right? Like if you're really concerned, they're going to take the 70 inch TV don't have a 70 inch TV, Got right? It. Like if you're not willing to lose it, don't throw it up there. But we're seeing more and more like, yeah, I, I mean, I've got six or seven carriers that'll do it at this point. Okay. It just kind of depends on the situation. We're seeing a lot of house hacks, mm-hmm. yep. right? And, and it's, you know, I'm going to live in one side and Airbnb the other. Okay. There's fewer carriers that are going to do that. Right. But if it's a standard Airbnb, yep. No, we got a lot of options. So. Okay. Right, interesting perspective. So, okay. So someone buys a duplex, they live or whatever it may be, and mm-hmm. they live in one unit. So that's two different policies or do you, do you get a regular landlord policy then an Airbnb pol- or not Airbnb? A- short-term actually, short-term. you get a regular homeowner's policy. Got it. You get a regular homeowner's policy and you add, you add that endorsement that changes the policy that says, yeah, I'm going to rent out this other side. Right. So uh-huh. like a rider. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what about, so that another strategy within this short-term rental world is rental arbitrage, right? So when you go to the landlord, you at, and you rent it from the landlord and you get permission to sublease it mm-hmm. and you put, mm-hmm. you play that margin. So what kind of policy would someone like that have to get? Is the same thing? Just. So, yeah, that's kind of an interesting one. So the, the original landlord mm-hmm. would need to have a short-term rental on it. So it's kind of an interesting concept insurance, you know, do you have insurable interest? And, and, and that is, look, I, I can't, I can't insure your house for me. Mm-hmm. Like it, I, I don't yeah. want to have financial incentive burn your house down. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, the, the, it really comes from the original owner because he's the one that really truly has the, the incentive. Got it. But if you're subletting, now you've got some liability. And so you too would want to have some coverage on it as well. Okay. Trouble is, is that, yeah, that means like everybody's you know, insurance is in the middle of every single one of these deals, right? Yeah. Like they're fortune 500 companies for a reason. Right. Yeah. But to some extent it's the right way of doing it because you're covered, he's covered, I'm covered, yeah. you know, like your interest needs to be covered some way. Got it. But actually bringing that up, I, it's something that I actually wanted to, to talk a little bit about because because we've seen a lot of, of people renting to assisted living. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's another okay. topic. All right. Yeah. So break it down. So give us a scenario. Just- yeah. So I've got a rental property, assisted living company comes in and maybe it's, you know, older people that they're targeting, or it could be handicapped. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. One of the things that I, I just want to stand up and say is you need to be honest with your insurance agent about what you're doing. Doing, yeah, yeah, because otherwise it's it's going to be a disaster. Um, because insurance companies won't insure stuff that they wouldn't insure otherwise. Mm-hmm. And so, 
so when you take a commercial entity and throw it in a house, a commercial entity being that assisted living and throw it in a house, now all of a sudden it's commercial. Yeah, right. And and one of the things that we're seeing is, is a lot of people, well, no, I don't want to pay anything more than 700 bucks for my insurance. Okay. Well, the risk is completely different, different yeah. right? So it, it's just one of those things like, man, if you want to go that route and you're going to try to hide something, it's called misrepresentation and they you're giving the insurance company a reason, a reason sure. to not, it, yeah, it's what they're going to bell the minute that yeah. they find out what's going on. And then it's like, well, yeah, now everybody's unhappy. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So you could provide products for that as well. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be honest with you. They are not cheap, okay. right? To do that right. It, it's going to end up in something called the ENS market, which means it's not a normal carrier by any stretch of the mm-hmm. imagination because of the risk that's there. However, like your the rent that you should be getting out of those deals is significantly higher, higher. right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we had one of these down in Tucson. You know, they had been they were insured with us. They had been paying something like I don't know nine hundred bucks on a fourplex. They ended up turning around at renting it to an assisted living company, and you know the rate went to twenty five hundred dollars, and and the landlord was kind of unhappy about it. But at the same time, man, if you didn't cover fifteen hundred dollars. An additional rent, right? You did that deal well, wrong. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Yeah. I mean, it, it should have been significantly higher. Yeah. I mean, I get we're cutting into mm-hmm. margins, but that's why you're doing it, right? No, I completely understand because I, I just finished our insurance renewal because we have residential facilities back in Illinois. And that's one of the things that we have with our insurance carrier. And it's, it's a bear, you know, putting everything out there because not only do you have, well, this is coming from a company perspective. So it's a little bit different versus shared living where me as the landlord own the property and then I'm renting it out to company. It's coming from a company perspective, but yes, what you're saying is absolutely true. You definitely have to make sure guys, you notify your insurance company, what you're doing, because they're looking for any reason not to insure you, not to, not to cover any liabilities, any losses. So if you're trying to be behind the curtain on some things, believe me, you will get exposed when it's time to, uh, you know, when it's time to put in that claim. Yeah. And, and, and that's funny that you say that. And it's, it's partially true. I got to be honest. I've seen scenarios where carriers have looked for coverage Mm -hmm. and actually ticks me off when they look for reasons to not cover. But it's also one of those things where we can look at it objectively and just say, Hey, like, like that having like in the group home that they had in Tucson, like that is a significantly different risk, yep. right? Like, like it, yeah. it was crazy. And, and they were like, yeah, well, you know, is there going to be a nurse there all the time? Like they, they wanted to yeah, know a ton that's, of stuff, that's right? That's what we had to go through. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. On, the fl- on the flip side, then you got like the storm chasers, right? Where they, you know, they go, they look for everything on the roof. Like they'll knock on your door and be like, we could use a storm from six months ago. As long as that, this yeah. day, you know, so yeah. Well, do you deal with, it's situations like that or yeah so it's actually kind of funny so we came to be an entity in in july 1st 2016 mm-hmm. Hila did and as i already said we had kind of purchased a, an agency and we went out and we purchased another agency and that closed on september 1st of 2016 so we were growing through acquisition and on october 8th of 2016 so so my agency is located in safford arizona and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second but but we got hit with a hell storm that like nobody had ever seen. Like I've lived there most of my life and it was bizarre, man. Like <laughs> things that I've never seen, like storm chasers and, and our, all of our adjusters were coming down from Colorado because it wrecked our town. It was insane. And that date actually changed how we viewed insurance, like personally me, mm-hmm. how I viewed insurance. Mm-hmm. And, and it was that idea of, okay, are we recovering for that catastrophic? Is there actually coverage, right. you know, because a book that I had not, I didn't even know my customers at this point, we had owned it for a month, oh, you know, wow. like we had sent wow. out postcards and emails and, you know, we'd met some of them mm-hmm. and it was, it was crazy, you know, and 50% of my customers claim. So when it comes down to those, that, huh? yeah, knocking on the door, like, Hey, what's going on? You know, like we can, we can do this. The car's all dented in your parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all of it. Yeah. And, and it really changed yeah. how we, how we viewed everything. But yeah, I mean, that happens, man. Like people knocking on the door saying, Hey, you can make a buck. Right. Yeah. The bottom line on insurance is you should never make a buck. 
Like, Got it. like your, our, our job is to make you whole, right? To put it back the way that it was. And the bottom line is you're going to end up better off, right? If I have an old roof and now I have a new roof, new I'm better roof. off. Yeah. And, and to some extent, you got to look at it from, well, if I just paid my deductible and my rates go up for a little bit, like, I'm, I, I win, right? I, I get a $10,000 roof and I paid a total of, I don't know, 1500 bucks. Right, That's a win. For, so, yeah. so what about when people bring in third-party claim adjusters? Is that, what do you, how do you feel about that situation? Like for fire and... So I actually hate it, okay. to be honest, because I don't feel like they do... I don't feel like they do justice to the customer, mm -hmm. right? Like if a customer is unhappy with a claim, I'd much rather them come to us and tell me, Derek, this sucks mm -hmm. so that I can get on the horn and say, why? why, what's going on? Right. And there have been situations where the carrier will say something. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not right. Yeah. Go with your public adjuster and push it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there are, there is a place for public adjusters for sure. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases, like if you just called your agent and just said, what's going on here, if they don't step in and kind of make some noise and make some phone calls, like I don't have a magic wand, I can't make them pay, right. but I can certainly make some noise and see if we can get to the bottom of it. And half, half the time, it's just a lack of communication, right? The company's asking for something, the insured has no idea what they're asking for. Yeah. And you know, that's mostly what we find right. is this just communication issue. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, great. Any yeah, other I can keep you going, man. Oh, we got time. <laughs> I, got, I got a million questions. Anything you want to touch on? No, I mean, we've touched on we've touched on most everything yeah. that I, I had. Yeah, we've hit vacants and flippers. We had landlords, we had short-term rentals, you know, assisted living. So that's yeah. a lot of stuff you cover for investors, man. So, you know, you mentioned you're you're out in Safford, right? Yeah. So, but yeah. you cover Northwest, Southeast, you covered a whole state. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of something that's interesting, right? Like forever in a day, it was, you had your insurance agents magnet on the refrigerator, mm -hmm. right? And they sent you a calendar every year. We cover stuff all over the state, but actually we're licensed in 32 states. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Right, I didn't know that. So pretty much everything West of the Mississippi minus Wyoming, no offense to Wyoming, but I just, you know, yeah. Not a lot of people there, right? <laughs> and then back east totally depends, right? Like, you know, there, there are states that we do a lot in. There are states that, you know, I, I mean, I won't touch Florida with a 10-foot pole. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know there's some great mm -hmm. Airbnb stuff there. And <laughs> yeah. I know there's some business that could be had there. But like, yeah, no, it's not it's worth it to me, right? The, and that's because of the risk? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I got to sleep at night, too. And so as I sit there and watch hurricanes roll in, I'm like, <laughs> right. what, what, what are my customers are getting hammered? Yeah. And so we actually, when we started, we actually did a lot of Florida. And and yeah, I sat there one night just shaking my head being like, yeah. and we lost our shorts in Florida. Right. Okay. Like everybody got paid, but it was just, you know, from an agency perspective, it was a nightmare. Well, right. that's good to know because a lot of our members invest out of state, like Marcus and I, so they can get you, get a quote from you west of the Mississippi potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then like, you know, I mean, there's, uh, you know, we do Illinois, we do some stuff in Ohio. I'm, okay. I mean, like, yeah, it, it totally depends. And some of it has to do with what kind of a nightmare it is to work in that state. Right. So, I mean, the way we view it is like, you know, we're a phone call away. We try to be easy to get a hold of. And in most cases, like, do you, I mean, do you want to sit across from me at my desk? Like, cool, we can make that happen. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But and, and most, most investors aren't. Yeah. All through the years, I don't think I've ever met any of my insurance agents, plus you know, nowadays it's just a different world. But if you want to see, see Derek personally, go to the Tucson meeting. He's there every month. Come to the Phoenix meeting. He's there every month. I think you, last meeting you, you wrote a policy or something like, yeah. <laughs> at the meeting or something happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> for Joey. sure. Yeah. Think, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> Joey's a man. Yeah. We, yeah. I, we were able to find some, we were able to find some solutions for him awesome. and, and help him out. So yeah, okay. for sure. And that's, and that's what it's all about, you know? So you guys got to make sure you come to the meetings. There is questions being answered things being done right there at the meeting, just like Derek said, policies are getting written. So if you have questions about your policies, questions about anything, you know, related to insurance, make sure you reach out to Derek, you know, come to the monthly meeting, go to the Tucson meeting, and he'll be willing to answer those questions for you. Yeah. Well, and you know, another thing you, you know, you may not be ready to jump ship and be like, ah, I want Derek as my insurance agent, but Hey, sometimes it's just nice to have somebody to bounce ideas, ideas off, off of, right? Like, you know, hey, well, have you considered this? Have you thought about that? And, you know, I, we try to take it from the perspective of I'd rather help 
because we see business boomerang back to us if we're just there helping, mm-hmm. teaching, yep. you know, hey, have you seen this claim? What about that? You know, and, and there might be times like, yeah, no, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about that one. Right. Right. But yeah, yep. if we can help, we can. Awesome. And outside of the meeting, they can call you, email you. How do we get hold of you? Yeah. So uh, best number is 928 248 1069. And, and that actually, that's a text number. You can call us, text us, uh, email us, you know, sales at gilainsurance.com. Hit our website at, at gilainsurance.com. And okay. yeah, and even on Ezria, our website under business associates, you can learn more about uh, Gila as well. So Derek, give us that telephone number one more time before we take off. Yeah, that number is uh, 928-248-1069. Okay, guys, so reach out to Derek Karchner with Gila Insurance. Get your questions answered. You never know. I mean, one of the great things that you touched on today, which I really didn't think about, was the house hack where you have an owner owner's policy, but then you also got tenants. So it's almost like a split situation right there. So yeah. it's a great answer in that question and fielding that question. So, guys, thank you for being here on today. Mike, appreciate it. All that you do for Ezria. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for, for having being, me. you know, a business associate. And with that being said, Arizona, we are going to sign off and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Take it easy. Awesome. Thanks for listening to the Ezria Show with your hosts, Marcus Maloney and Mike Delpreet. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found this information valuable, head over to Ezria.org and learn more about our community.